This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. 7.17 in the morning, you are listening to The Morning Run on Tuesday, February the 8th with Shazana Shaoning and Chen Li. But in the meantime, we have Johor on our minds. Get it? Like Georgia on my mind. Now it's Johor. <laughs> doesn't have the same tune, Shaz. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. That's true. The Election Commission will meet tomorrow to finalize dates for nomination and polling day for the Johor state elections. So in anticipation of these state polls, political parties have kick-started campaigns machinery since last week with a flurry of events taking place. So Barisan National launched their Western Region election machinery in Iskandar Putri last Friday, attended by AMNO, MCA and MIC leaders. So yesterday we looked at AMNO's prospects in the state and today we're continuing the discussion with a look at MCA's chances in revival of Johor uh, in Johor. In uh, GE14, MCA contested in 15 Johor state seats and lost all of them. Having previously held eight seats, MCA President Dato Sri Wikasyong holds one of only two parliamentary seats, namely Ayahitam. So will we see an MCA resurrection in Johor in tandem with renewed confidence in AMNO's return to power? So joining us on the line for analysis is Dr. James Chin, lecturer in Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania. James, good morning. It's always good to have you. So MCA was all but decimated in Johor during GE14. What do you make of their chances this time around, having seen a sort of national revival under the Brigata National Government? All right. A very good morning to you. Uh, so MCA is uh, under uh, Barisan National, not under Barikata. That's true. Um, yep. So uh, in terms of this uh, uh, upcoming Johor uh, election, I suspect MCA will do quite well. And the reason is there appears to be a mood among the electorate that is moving back to Barisan National. So MCA will probably benefit from this wave moving back to AMNO and within the larger framework, uh, Barisan National. I think several things will work in MCA's favour. Uh, besides the fact that there is a sort of a trend moving back to Barisan National, I think within the Chinese community itself, uh, two things that will benefit the MCA, uh, of course, is that uh, a lot of uh, Chinese in, in Johor are quite angry with the MCA. And some of this anger may spill over. For example, people refusing to come out to vote. Uh, the former opposition diehard supporters may not come out to vote and they'll probably use COVID as an excuse. Uh, secondly, I think uh, there is some turbulence inside DAP itself. So some of the DAP uh, members uh, inside the party may not be working hard uh, to help the DAP re- retain some of the seats they won in 2018. Uh, so for all those reasons, I suspect the MCA uh, will do uh, better this time around. Sorry, James, I want to clarify. You say that uh, the people are angry at DAP or are they angry at MCA? Oh, they're angry at DAP and the whole Pakatan. The 22 months Pakatan was in power. And here I'm specifically uh, referring to the Chinese community. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of anger. As you know, right, one of the key issues in Johor uh, was the UEC issue. And of course, uh, DAP play very hard on this theme before 2018 that if they do become part of the federal government, uh, they will ensure that UEC will be recognised. So after 22 months, uh, it was quite clear that uh, uh, although DAP worked very, very hard to try to get UEC uh, to be recognised, uh, they could not. Uh, they could not overcome the opposition from Mahathir. Mahathir just refused to recognise the uh, Chinese Independent School qualification UEC. So I think that did a lot of damage to to uh, uh, DAP and DAP's standing within the Johor Chinese community. Okay, it sounds like at this moment that, you know, the anger against DAP is benefiting MCA, but MCA alone, let's just look at them. Uh, what campaign strategy do you think they will uh, run this time? In Well, basically the MCA uh, can't really run on things like, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, influence policy making, all this sort of thing. Uh, basically, their, their, their campaign measure has always been political stability, uh, more economic opportunities for the Chinese uh, to make sure that the government doesn't pass anti-Chinese policies. Uh, so it's very much uh, the old approach. I don't think MCA has any uh, new things to sell to the electorate. But given the world, uh, sorry, the national trend towards going back to the Barisan National, uh, I think one of the key arguments they will make was that uh, you look at the past uh, four or five years since 2018, we had a series of, of, of what they call it, change of three regime change, political instability, the country is going nowhere, you've got a COVID-19 pandemic, and you remember the time when the government was under Barisan National, 
Uh, although things uh, were not so good, but at least we had political stability, we had steady economic growth, and the MA. Uh, the MCA was able to deliver some benefits to the Chinese community. So I think all this will, will play quite well uh, for the, electorate, the Chinese electorate who are sort of sick and tired of all the shenanigans that has been happening since 2018. So how much clout does uh, MCA have within Barisan National in seat negotiations? What seats do you think will be contested among the BN parties? So uh, the golden rule in the Barisan National is that you get to contest you, you get first pick or they won't disturb you if you had uh, won the seat before, if you had an incumbent. But as you mentioned in your introduction, MCA lost all their seats. Uh, the good news for the MCA is that because they've lost all their seats, uh, for we cast on, it can, if it can even win one or two seats back, right? That's 100% uh, what they call it, uh, performance uh, me- measurement. So uh, in terms of the seats, I expect MCA to actually get a big chunk of it because don't forget, in 2018, uh, some of the uh, non-Malay seats or mixed seats had to be shared with Gerakan. So Gerakan has gone over to Perikatan, so MCA can claim on those seats held on by uh, Gerakan. But of course, AMNO will not give all the Gerakan seats to MCA. Uh, the, but the, I think they, will, they, will, they, they are quite generous in the sense that uh, Johor is quite a unique case. I suspect uh, they will allow uh, MCA to get more than a dozen seats. I mean, to contest, not to win, but to contest. <laughs> James, let's spend a bit of time on MCA itself. You know, Give us some colour in terms of what's happening within the party. Is it united behind their party president, Wee Ka Siong? Because we know almost every other political party seems to be divided at this moment. Yes. So MCA is fairly united. Johor, as I mentioned, is a special case. It is the, 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 the home base for, for Wee Ka Siong. And Wee Ka Siong's political secretary, has basically been running uh, the state. He's been running quite efficiently. Uh, efficiently, this is a quite a young guy. If I'm not mistaken, he's in his uh, early 40s. He has done quite a good job in, in, in sort of revamping MCA. You have to remember, after 2018, MCA has gone quiet for almost two years. And then after 2020, uh, after the first regime, uh, second regime change, uh, they came back because they were given a seat in in. in in the uh, Perikatan government. So they had access to some government resources. So I think that played quite well into the game. Uh, and also, I think that this time around, uh, because of the big broom that was uh, brought into uh, Johor MCA in 2018, uh, I expect them to, to put up some glamour candidates. When I say some glamour candidates, I'm talking about uh, very young people. These are people under 30 years old. Uh, I think MCA will run quite a number of quite a number of those uh, young candidates uh, like we saw in Malacca they, they, they will go for that strategy again mm. and you alluded to this earlier um, James regarding DAP uh, and the challenges that they face they're currently on a roadshow right now unveiling their candidates one by one in the lead up to the polls and I suppose to drum up support do you think they can drum up the support that they got in GE14 given the number of different um, issues that you mentioned earlier regarding um, why voters are angry with them right now Right. So uh, DAP's biggest problem, as I mentioned earlier, is that the party in, in Johor is, is quite divided. Uh, the old gang that uh, Liu Chin Tong got rid of in 2018, uh, that gang is coming back uh, far more united this time. And they all seem to, to, to you know, work on a single issue, which is to ensure that DAP will do badly so they can use it as an excuse to attack uh, Liu Chin Tong. Uh, so Chin Tong is a highly, highly controversial figure within uh, DAP Johor itself. I think the other big problem that MCA faces in Johor is that uh, we've got the entry of Muda and Warisan. Muda struck Warisan. Uh, this new group appears to be making quite a lot of noise on the ground. And from the reports I've received, it looks like uh, Muda has some momentum. Uh, Muda itself will also put out some glamour candidate. Uh, I'm not sure whether your listeners know that a, a very prominent tycoon, the daughter has been offered a seat under Muda. And she, she's likely to stand in, in, in Johor. Now, the thing is, you have to remember, uh, the voting group that is likely to vote for Muda, uh, traditionally, is are the same voters who are likely to vote for uh, PKR and, and DAP. So Muda will probably eat into DAP's vote, split the vote, and that will allow Barisan National to win on the other side. So this is a big issue for the DAP. Uh, I don't see a way out of this, uh, simply because uh, Muda is not going to give way this is Muda's debut election, and they can't afford to be seen to be to be uh, what they call it, uh, uh, giving up uh, too much to 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 people like uh, Pakatan Harapan. 
James, one last question from us. Uh, maybe it's a bit too early to ask this question, but we always try. Uh, is this Johor State Elections Barisan Nationals to lose? Uh, yes, it is in, in, in a way. Uh, my take is that uh, Barisan uh, uh, will do very well. Uh, very, They are very likely to, to be on track to win a, a big victory. They might even get two-thirds majority. Uh, but the biggest casualty will not be... Uh, Pakatan Harapan, the biggest casualty this time around uh, will actually be uh, 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 Besatu and probably uh, PKR. Uh, these two are really in trouble on the ground in, in, in Johor. And if there's a repeat of what we saw, saw in Malacca, right, uh, then Besatu is in big, big trouble in the next GE15. Uh, for PKR, I think a lot of people have sort of written them off uh, with the fiasco, the logo, and the fact that a lot of people... Uh, coming around to the opinion that uh, maybe it's time for Anwar to go. I think once this sort of uh, sentiment gets hold on the ground, it's very difficult to reverse it. And I'm starting to see sentiments against uh, Bersatu uh, uh, coming out very, very strongly in Johor. James, thank you very much for speaking with us this morning. That was Dr. James Chin, Professor of Asian Studies at the University of Tasmania, talking to us about the prospects for MCA, DAP, and a few, and hazarding a guess on uh, whether Johor will be Barisan Nationals to lose at this stage. At this stage, it does appear to be so, but lots of factors in play, and we'll certainly be in touch with James uh, as the state elections uh, develop. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes. BFM 89.9, The Business Station.